there's a very interesting phrase that Paul uses in the New Testament, and that is when he commands us to redeem the time. One of the hymns I remember from my childhood was the hymn, Work for the Night is Coming. We often sang it at the Sunday evening service, but it was work for the night is coming when man's work is done. And the whole concept of time is a really a very fascinating one. We know we're creatures, but what we don't realize is that time itself is something that is created. In the evolutionary perspective, time has become one of the things that they have to eternalize. They have to say time has always existed. In the naturalistic perspective, they have to. Man cannot think in any way other than by the limitation of time. Our entire day is structured around what time it is and the fact that we have yet to do certain things in only a limited amount of time. Our week is constructed that way. Our year is constructed. Our youth is constructed that way. That We have to do certain things because we only have a limited amount of time. Even our sentence structure has a beginning, a middle, and an end because that's how we think. Even our thoughts are structured by time. And you were told about heaven that there's no time there. God is not limited by time. And so if we're not going to think as Darwinian naturalists, we have to rethink our view of time and eternity. Which is the determinative order? According to evolution, time is determinative. Time controls everything. And God and eternity is something that man has made up that is actually very temporal and ephemeral because it's just an idea he's come up with. The doctrine of creation is central to a belief in time because creation starts with a God who is sovereign over a creation, and therefore it implies that that God is still sovereign and creation is still under his control. If evolution is true, then predestination is impossible. If evolution is true, remember that God has to be a latecomer to the universe. And if evolution is true, then we have to say that perhaps God is overstating his claim to have any say-so in the universe that was naturalistically determined. Because if evolution is true, then nature is really determinative. So in a Darwinian naturalism, time forms and determines eternity. But in, according to scripture, eternity, God himself creates and determines time. So we have to think about time as a creation of God that is only here throughout human history and that someday it will not exist. Dualism sees man's problem as a metaphysical one. It says that his problem is he's made of matter. Christianity sees man's basic problem as a moral one. If you improperly define problem, then you're improperly going to apply an answer. And so a problem was when Christians early on decided that man's problem was that he was flesh and blood. They were adopting a Greek philosophy, and it had implications in the Christian life. Because what immediately appeared in the early church because of this dualistic idea that flesh is bad and spirit is good, what immediately appeared as a result of this Greek philosophy was Christian asceticism and monasticism. And these were both completely controlled by this wrong view of the nature of being itself. And so, to be spiritual, early Christians punished their bodies. They denied themselves comforts. They saw physical misery as a higher way because they were denying this terrible thing, their flesh. Well, if you believe that your very flesh, your very body is contemptible, then all of the world is contemptible. Time and history is contemptible, and you should abandon it. So this became a problem early on. Well, there was a reaction to that in the Protestant Reformation. When the Protestant Reformation went back to the Bible, it moved away from dualism, back to a view of the sovereignty of God. And because they believed in the sovereignty of God, they saw a God-centered view of history. History in man's limited time suddenly had relevance. So the doctrine of predestination by a sovereign God gave time and history an importance they had never had before. And what developed because of the Protestant Reformation rather quickly was what we have come to call the Protestant work ethic. 
And it was really largely responsible for the Industrial Revolution. It was responsible for the work ethic in early America, which was notorious. It was responsible for the emphasis on craftsmanship and doing an honest day's labor for a day's wages. So it saw a different meaning to time and history because it had a proper view of the sovereignty of God. And Christian Reconstruction is really about applying the doctrine of the sovereignty of God to different areas. And that includes time and history. And this sounds a bit abstract, but if you look at the history of Protestantism and what it accomplished and its social and cultural impact, it no longer becomes theoretical. It no longer becomes an intellectual exercise. It becomes a very practical aspect of the outworking of faith in people's lives. Protestantism valued time and history because it saw the kingdom of God as central, and man's labor in the kingdom of God was valid. And even though our citizenship in the kingdom of God was totally by grace, sanctification, man's obedience to God and his submission to God, was his means of being a faithful servant in the kingdom. So time in history became the arena, the context for man's faithfulness to God. And so a small area of thought can have tremendous implications in the religious and the cultural life of an entire civilization. So Paul was right. We have to work to redeem the time. We have to make the most of the resources God gave us. And if we're talking about money, it's easy to say, well, yes, we should uh, do something for the glory of God with this money that we have. If we have anything physical, it's easy to say we should somehow be put into the service of God. And yet, our ideas about something as simple and as basic as time also have to be controlled by this bigger view of the sovereignty of God and its meaning and its purpose and how we use the time, as Paul said, how we redeem the time to serve God and his kingdom. Some aspects of how this played out in Western history is really the history of Western civilization. What did the Protestants develop in the West? Specialization, division of labor, technology, inventions, industrialization. What do all these things have in common? They were to save time. A tool was not something to say, well, this allows me to do something in half the time, therefore I only have to work half of a day. No, it means I can do twice as much work in one day. So this had a very real impact on life as we know it today. And the West, for many centuries, because it was so controlled by this idea of the sovereignty of God, was very concentrated on, on very practical applications, and work and labor was very important. This has been a very important part of our history. We lost it largely because we retreated from a Calvinistic view of the sovereignty of God to a pietism whereby we express our spirituality in very subjective ways. And yet if you read scripture, particularly the prophets, God didn't repeatedly tell Israel and Judah through the prophets about their heart feelings. He didn't talk to them about their spiritual condition. He kept talking to them about how they weren't obeying. They weren't doing the things that he told them to do. So we work for the night is coming. We do the things that we're supposed to be doing because time has relevance. And we only have a limited amount of time which we could redeem for the greater glory of Jesus Christ and his kingdom.